Another tip is always use flash. I use flash for 99% of my pictures, even in daylight. Um, very important to take away shadows, shadows from caps. It just boosts the colour, fills in. This one again is taken with a long lens, but with a flash. Just to take out some of the shadows and make it deeper. And of course, this is a longer exposure because I wanted more movement in the water, but to keep the, keep the actual image sharp. But it was absolutely the opposite here. The light was too strong. Take a, a regular picture, it would just burn out. So I, I had to use, again, the opportunity, but this time he stood behind the sun and it works great. This, uh, this image has been on the cover of nine fly fishing magazines so far in the last two years. Looking for uh, a background when you photograph a fish. This was... Uh, this is probably my most sold image. I think it's been published 500 times. Since I took this picture in 94. So this is 20 years old, this picture. Uh, on my first trip to the Kola Peninsula in Russia. It was a big trade, it had fantastic markings, but I was alone. So I didn't have anybody to hold the fish and the background was just perfect for it. And this, this image keeps on selling, it's been on t-shirts, hats, magazines, books, postcards, calendars, so this is, this is only a year's wages, that one image. So very important when you're photographing somebody holding a fish, that you tell them what to do. It's, it's you know, you don't have to go as far as like a fashion photographer and uh, tell them to pay to be more sexy and turn on now, let me see a good side. But it's important that you tell, you direct them. Some people are fabulous to direct, as they are in any kind of photography or film, maybe. and some people just can't do it. But if you help them, it's important that you, you, all the picture is balanced. What I wanted to do in this picture is to show the majestic landscape, the great fish, and the fishermen. And the wind was constantly blowing here, uh, very, very strongly. And I wanted also to show that in the image. So you tell a, also tell a story with that picture. Tell a story. Again, this was a difficult picture because I was fishing alone. So I had to put the camera on a tripod and photograph myself with the fish. This was my first big jar. And I took some photographs in order to get the light right with my net up. Because as you can see, there was a lot of flies. And they were all biting. And after I got the light right, I had to drop the net, pick the fish up. But then the flies started coming in. And under my knee, I have a cable release because this was taken on a Hasselblad camera. So I had a cable release that I had to kneel on at the same time as pushing, uh, holding the fish and bearing the flies. But it worked. Again, this has been a great image for me. My time is up, but if you have any questions, I'll be happy to uh, answer them if you pop over to where I'm uh, tying flies. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Uh, and it floats. So when I'm wading or photographing in a lake and wading, I use that as my tripod. Because it floats and I can rest on it. Very useful.
but I don't use a, a, a waterproof house for the camera. If I'm doing underwater pictures, I use my telephone. And it's, it's waterproof. And it takes magnificent photographs. 16 <laughs> megabytes. taken on the phone. Absolutely fantastic. And it takes fabulous in the water pictures. So when in need it's possible to use it. But I don't um, I don't believe in protecting my cameras. I believe in using them for what they are. The reason I use camera is that you can knock nails in with them and they'll still be alright. Um, and treat them roughly. There's always a lot of water around when you're working too. But I've never had a problem with it. That's alright.